Now, we've been talking about here at Destination 126, Recovery God's Way, uh, the foolishness of, uh, of, of becoming addicted to something that doesn't have the power to have authority over us. Uh, one of the verses of Scripture that we're going to be looking at uh, is uh, Romans chapter 6, and, and, and it's so, I love it because it says that you and I, we become slaves to whatever it is that we submit ourselves to become a slave to. Remember, uh, Genesis 126, God says, let us create man in our image and let us uh, and let them have our likeness and let them be in dominion over everything that we have created. So we are, we're saying that there is no way, uh, based upon the word of God, there is no way that a created thing should be mastering us. Uh, in other words, tobacco plants, uh, uh, marijuana, uh, the, 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 the things that are used to create beer and alcohol, you know, the hops and the oats and wheats and barley and all of those different things, even the things that create the cocaine and, and all of the stuff that everything that is created does not have a right to be in authority over our lives. And yet so many of us uh, and I'm talking about not only the secular world, but so many in in the faith give power to things that doesn't have power. You know, it's even to the degree of giving back power to Satan uh, that G that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have taken from him. Now, again, a, a lot of times when when I'm sharing things like this, people think, well, he's making this all into a a sin thing and a, and a righteousness deal. And that, and bottom line, that's that's what it is. It's a sin issue, and and we we gotta be able to call it what it is if we hope to enjoy the freedoms and and the and the privileges that belongs to one who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so. As we look at it, if we see it as sin, then we can appropriate the proper solution to bring about the desired things that we have for our life. Yet so many people don't want to acknowledge the foolishness of it. Because when you begin to look at addiction, and, and again, I'm talking from my own personal perspective, after doing 21 years of drugs and alcohol, uh, mainlining cocaine and meth, uh, snorting it, popping pills, drinking, uh, smoking crack, all of these things that I've done. Uh, and I did it I did it for long periods of time, for 21 years. And, and that, was, that was times that I would go three and four weeks at a time just getting high. And so uh, when I got locked up in 93, I weighed 126 pounds. So the things that I'm saying is, uh, is I'm not trying to uh, make it look bad, but then again, I'm not going to dress it up. When you... Step into recovery. The Bible says that your eyes are open, and all at once you are able to see some things that you were not able to see before. And and so once you get into the light, once you enter into the truth, and the Holy Spirit uh, takes up residency in your heart, and He begins to give you vision and and revelation, then you begin to see how foolish that lifestyle is. And a lot of people don't like that because they they really and truly want to set the created against the creator. And they want the created to blame the creator for making them that way. And we looked at that some in, in, in Isaiah chapter 29, verses 14, 15, and 16, where it says that we turn things upside down because the created begins to blame the creator for the things that, he, that we are doing. But we, we see in Genesis that from the very beginning, the book of beginning, God said, the creator of heaven and earth and all that is therein, he says, let us create man in our image and let them have dominion over everything that we've created. Now, even in the simplicity of studying that verse of scripture, if you have ears to hear with, as Jesus says in John chapter 6, if you have ears to hear with, hear what the spirit of the living God is saying. God is saying, you are created in my image, and you are created in my likeness. And so what we have to do is if we embrace the truth of God's word, then we have to look at what we do and how we do things and why we do things in light of the truth of God's word. And so we have to begin to say, if I am created in the image of God and, and have the likeness or the character of God, then 
then my behavior should match it. Uh, and that goes back to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 4 where Jesus says, if any, if, if any is born of the Lord, then we ought to also walk and live with him. Uh, I'm just trying to build a case here that, that when I bring these verses out, you're going to be able to see something, and, and it's going to set you free. It's because you're going to be able to see that you do have the power to get up right now, this moment, and walk away from whatever it is that you're doing. Nothing that, that you are participating in right now has the power to control you because God did not give it that. And again, here at Destination 126, we make no apologies that we believe that the Word of God is perfectly and is perfect and there's no fallacies, no errors in it. Whatever God's Word says, if you and I would activate it through our belief, obey what we say we believe concerning God's Word, that will give us that overcoming faith that gives us the victory over the things of this world. So in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 4, Jesus says, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we, hereby know we, Hereby know, know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. And again, when you translate that word walk into live, he said that if we're created in the image of God and in the likeness of God, then we should be like God. And so that means that if I am saying that I am addicted to crack or addicted to marijuana and Budweiser, then I am saying that God created me that way. And a lot of people are believing that. I mean, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to get uh, into that, that other, this matter that deep, but God makes no mistakes. And, and God doesn't create something to function outside of the way that he has created it and formed it. And yet today we through, uh, through this twisted beliefs that, that we have come to, we begin to say that God created certain people one way physically, but they live another way. And, 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 and they say, God created me this way. That, that, that don't make any kind of sense. But that's, that's some of the stuff that we're looking at. And, and so even in addiction, we begin to say that we are addicted. And, and, and I hear preachers say this. I hear counselors say this. Christian counselors, I don't care about what the people of the world is saying because they don't know the truth of God's word. But those of us who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and those of us who uphold God's word and says that God's word is truth, then those are the ones that, that, that really frighten me when I hear them say, man, that crack is a bad boy. That ice is very powerful, man. Boy, somebody get hooked there, man. And, and, and basically, they even go back to start saying that that the individual is created to have this disease concept. And, and so, and then they basically go back to say that based upon how your mama and dad was, then that will facilitate how you're supposed to be. And I, I don't agree with a lot of that, but I'm not going to get into all of that. But what I do want you to see is that there is no way that something that is created is supposed to be in dominion over your life and over my life, Not especially when we come into the knowledge of the truth and we are born again and we receive the Holy Spirit and all at once our eyes is open, our ears is open, and we can actually hear and see what God is saying in his word. And so once that happens, then you have to look at it that God says, you are supposed to be just like me. If you're created in my image and you're created in my likeness to have my character, then what you do should be a reflection of the God that you serve. And, and God says many times that we are foolish people because we create idols that we, that, and we worship those idols as though they are God, even though in our own uh, uh, natural senses we know that crack does not have the power to create you. It, you know, it's just like with this little timer that I have sitting here. If, if, if I don't mess with that timer, that timer cannot mess with me because it's a created being. It does not have the faculties nor the abilities to think on its own, to formulate thoughts, or to move against me. I must willingly participate with it. So go to Romans chapter 6. We're going to look at that, and we're going to see some things. Because uh, the truth makes you free. When you come into the knowledge of the truth and you begin to see it, then, then if you operate in it, 
if you'll move in that, that truth. Uh, that's why uh, in, in James it says faith without works is dead. Faith without corresponding action is dead. To say you believe something and then don't practice what you say you believe, it's, it produces a dead spirit on the inside of you. It doesn't produce any results. And so what, what James is saying is if you believe that God, that God have, have, uh, have allowed his son to die for you, to set you free from sin, and have sent forth his Holy Spirit to live on the inside of you, then we should not be given our allegiance to crack, uh, ice, Budweiser, any other f uh, created thing. So look what he says in, in Romans chapter 6 and verse 15. He says, what then? Should we, should we sin because we're, verse 16, I'm sorry. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of, of, or of obedience unto righteousness. So he says, Paul says, listen, it is, it is something that you and I must look at, that we become servants to what, whatever it is that we'll willingly that we willingly submit ourselves to. He says, so, but wiser will not have any power over you. Crack will not have any power over you if you do not willingly submit yourself to it. In other words, I have to pick it up. I have to fire it up. I have to smoke it. I have to do a lot of things. Now, now God says that that is a very foolish man or woman that creates something and then worship that something as though it is God. Because all of us, you and I, we have to get the cigarette. We have to light it up. We have to inhale it. We have to buy it. We have to do it on a regular basis. And then say, man, I, I am hooked to this nicotine. It, it, that cigarette masters me. Or to say I'm hooked to, uh, I'm addicted to Budweiser. Wait, wait a minute. You bought the Budweiser. You open it up. You drank it. Now you're saying that the Budweiser is your God, that it is your Lord. You're worshiping it as though it is a God. And God is saying that if you quit submitting yourself to it, then it will not be your master. But if you, as long as you buy it, as long as you open it, as long as you drink it, then it will, it will be like your master. But God says it is foolish to worship something that doesn't have the power, nor does it have the ability to make you its servant. We have to willingly go and get it. In Isaiah chapter 44, it has a beautiful picture of this, and it shows you how we do certain things. Now, again, I want you to hear my heart. I am not trying to make little of people that participate in drugs, in, in, in abusing drugs and alcohol of any kind. But at the same time, I am not going to give crack, I'm not going to give meth, ice, any other thing, power, the power of, of, of having life in itself. And that's what so many of us have done. A, a lot of people have given life to it. And I used to be just like that. So I'm not, again, I'm not making little of this. Uh, uh, being, being in the addictive mindset is very destructive. It, it is demeaning. It destroys lives. It destroys people's health. It destroys people's finances, families. And so I'm not making light of this, but at the same time, I want you to see how foolish it is of those of us who give the created thing the power to master us. We are, we are turning things upside down. That's what Isaiah said in uh, 29, 16. Since we're in the book of Isaiah, I just want you to see this. Again, I, I, you know, I'm not turning this into no preaching ses session, but I want you to know that the truth, God's word is the truth. And, and, and I've said this once. I said until God takes me home, I make no apologies for it. There is not but one recovery plan, and that is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want a person to be recovered, and there is no such thing as recovery if a person do not come back into the image of God. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things, a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become brand new. And so, uh, 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 and so what, what I'm saying is this, that if recovery that don't take you back into the image of God and don't give you the character of God and his likeness and don't put you in dominion over those created things, that's not recovery. That is, that is something totally opposite from a biblical recovery, from the word of God recovery. That's why we, 
That's why we call this destination 126, recovery God's way. God's way of recovering us is getting us back into the likeness of who he is, back into heaven, his character. And God is not hooked on crack. God is not hooked on Budweiser. God is not hooked on meth. On meth. It's no way the creator will allow the created things to master him. And he says, I've given you the power and, and the authority to be in dominion over everything that is created. So you, it's no way that we can uh, truthfully say that I am, I am addicted to Budweiser. Yeah, you can let people uh, uh, educate you into coming to a place to where you agree with it. And believe me, I know a lot of people that are deeply ingrained in, 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 in uh, this here disease concept that will fight you tooth and nails. And basically what they fail to realize is they're saying, God did this to me. Sound like Adam in the Garden of Eden. But look at what it says in, in Isaiah 29. And, uh, and in verse, uh, I'm going to start it at 15. In uh, and, and 15 he says, Woe unto them that seek deep to to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, who sees us and who knoweth us? Verse 16, surely you're turning, your turning of things upside down should be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? Is it not yet a very little while in Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. And so God is saying, you, if I am the creator, and I created the heavens and the earth and everything that is therein, if you as a Christian, and again, I make no apologies for this, because uh, that's who I'm talking to. There are so many people that are called up, that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and yet they're still in bondage to crack and meth and ice and a host of other things. And and when you've done that, it, uh, uh, I believe this this writer named Welch says it's like misplaced worship. It's like you're worshiping worshiping. Uh, 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 the drugs and the alcohol. And I believe that's true because you give it your time, your talent, and, and all of your treasure. We spend it on this one thing. And what we would give to God, we don't have to give to God because we're giving it to something that is not a God. And so God says, you're turning things upside down. If you can believe with all your heart that I created the heavens and the earth and everything that's therein, if you believe that I, can, I created you, then you got to believe that I'm God enough to be able to make the things that I created to function the way that I created it to function. And so in, in Isaiah 29, he really brings that home. Uh, we cannot say, God, you don't understand. Uh, this cocaine is just too strong and too powerful for me. And yet you're the one. I'm the one that's going and buying it. I'm the one that's picking it up. I'm the one that is snorting it or smoking it or shooting it up. I'm the one that's doing it. It seemed like to me I'm doing a whole lot for something that don't have the power to make me do it. I got to do it. I got to submit to it. I got to obey that urge. If, if I don't mess with that, it would not mess with me. And folks, for the last 23 years, I have not been involved with no drugs and no chemicals, no alcohol, no cigarettes, of none of those things in the last 23 years. So you're not going to convince me that this here, whatever it is that you're struggling with, has the power over you. Because for 21 years, it had power over me. But once I come to the knowledge of the truth, Jesus says, when you know the truth, the truth that you know in practice, it will make you free from the lies that we've been embraced. Remember, lies put you in bondage. Truth sets you free. And, and, and I don't practice no steps, folks. I practice one step and one step only. I believe with all of my heart that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I believe that he died for my sins, and I believe that he was raised the third day, and I believe that his Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me. And so this is my belief, that if God has the power to save me from a devil's hell, then he has the power to save me from Budweiser, from crack, from ice. You cannot tell me that you believe that God created the heavens and the earth and all that is therein, and yet he cannot give you a spirit that causes you to be victorious over the things that we, we serve. Now listen to way, the way Isaiah explained this. And this is going to show you what I mean about 
the foolishness of saying that I'm addicted to crack. I'm addicted to Budweiser. Listen to what Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 44, and we're going to start it at uh, probably verse 9. It's, uh, the whole chapter is beautiful, uh, as all of God's word is. And I, I love that verse 8 where God says, there is, is there a God besides me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. In other words, God says, there is no one more, more powerful than me. There's no one that can create and no one that can resist and no one that can make me into a lie. And, and I love that. And, and, but see, again, that is something that the Holy Spirit have got to impart on the inside of you. Because the only way you're going to quit submitting to the lie is if the truth of God is revealed to you by the Spirit of the living God so that you can actually see and hear and know that that is a lie. I no longer have to submit to that. I no longer have to participate with that. I, I have a choice now, and I choose to no longer give myself to drugs and chemicals of any kind. I choose to not do that. And there's no way that that which has no power is going to make me who is filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That has no power over a person that is filled with the Spirit of God, that is walking in obedience to God's Word. Now listen to what he says in Isaiah 44, starting in verse 9. Uh, he says, They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit. And they are their own witnesses. They see not nor know that they may be ashamed, who have formed a God or a molten Molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing. He says, when you and I make this here, and this crack, this cocaine, this mess, ice, but wise, whatever it is, when we make it our God, he says, it is profitable for nothing. Because all it does is take your money, take your health, destroy your family, destroy your freedom, destroy everything that you ever worked for. And yet we constantly give our allegiance to it. You know, I, I see people walking around and it's sad. With, with an with a oxygen tank, with oxygen being pumped in their nose, and yet they're still smoking a cigarette. I mean, they have worshipped those cigarettes for 20 years, 30 years, and they're killing them, and yet they're still smoking them. I've seen people that have went from having a, 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 a beautiful home, a beautiful family, and because of their their cocaine use or their crack use or their ice use, they've lost everything, and yet they still worship it as though it is a god. And, 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 and they would tell you at the same time, I am a Christian, you know, and I'm not going to deny that, but at the same time, Jesus said that you ought to walk as he walks because you have the same spirit in you. We have the same spirit in us that was in, that was in Jesus Christ. He says, so you and I should be able to walk as he walks. So now look, in the Amplified, it says it like this, and this is, this is just really good. It says, so in Isaiah 44, verse 9, he says, All who make graven idols are confusions, chaos, and worthlessness. Their idol, objects in which they delight, will not profit. And their own witnesses, the worshipers, do not see or know that they may be put to shame. Who has been, who has been such a fool as to fashion a god or cast a graven image that is profitable for nothing. And yet, I have to confess that, Lord, I was that fool. I, I was one that, that, that fashioned this here addictive mindset, this addictive lifestyle. I fashioned it. I made it. I bought the drugs. I used the drugs. I participated in those things. And you know the profit of those things? You know what's going to be the profitableness of worshiping those kind of things? For, for smoking cigarettes daily, every day, you're going to have lung cancer. Uh, tr uh, using strong drink, uh, using chemicals, uh, putting them in, in, into your body, you have cirrhosis of the liver. Those are not things that we really want to profit in, yet we participate in it, and those are the things that I make people look at. What do you think you're going to benefit from using drugs and alcohol? What do you think is going to be the profitableness of it? What do you think is going to be the result of it when it's all said and done at the close? 
close of the day, when it get, when it gets time for you to meet your maker, what is going to be the end? Yes, you can. I'm not saying that you're not going to be saved. I'm not saying that you're not going to have heaven. But my God, you're going to be the, you're going to be the lived a life that is so far beneath what God have created you and I to live. So he he goes on and he says this, and this is what I love about how God shows us how foolish things are. He said, behold, uh, and I'm not going to read it all, so let's drop down to 13. He said, the carpenter stretches out a line. He marks it out with a pencil or red arc, and he fashions an olive with planes, and he makes it out with the comp compasses and shapes it to have the figure of a man with the beauty of a man to dwell in a house. He hews him down cedars and takes the home tree in the oak and lets them grow to grow strong for him among the trees of the forest. He plants a fir tree or an ash and the rain nourishes it. Then he then it becomes fuel for a man to burn. A part of it he takes and warms himself. Yes, he kindles a fire and bakes bread. Then out of the remainder, the leavings, he makes a god and worships it. He with his own hands makes it into a graven image and falls down and worships it. Now you tell me if that is not utter foolishness when you look at it. Now listen to it. This is what God is saying. He said, you and I go out and we plant this here, whether it, it is tobacco plants, whether it is uh, hops, uh, oats, weeds, grain, uh, the stuff that we need to make our Budweiser, whether we we plant our, our, our cocoa plants for our cocaine and our meth and all of these things. What, whatever it is, we plant it, he says. And so, But he used a tree. He says, it's like a man that plants a tree, and then you go out and you cut the tree down. And then you drag the tree home. You, you, you use part of the tree to warm your house with. You use part of the tree to cook your food with. And then the part that is left, he says, you cut eyes, nose, and a mouth into it, and you bow down, and you worship the remainder of that tree as though it is God. God says, now, who is that foolish? And I say, Father, I was that foolish. And there are many others that worship the created things and do not realize that we are the ones that that created this monster. And it is not the created things that is mastering us. It is the ignorance that is within us. But the moment we acknowledge the truth, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26 says, the moment we acknowledge the truth, we can get up and walk away from it. Because again, remember, it is what we ourselves created. So then I can also refuse to worship you. And for the last 23 years, I have chosen to no longer worship the God of my own making who is unprofitable, who can do absolutely nothing for me. I will worship and serve the one and only true God as he has expressed himself through his son Jesus, through the word of God. You've been watching Destination 126 with Jonah Martin. To order a copy of today's program, write to us at P.O. Box 1655, Belton, Texas, 76513 or call 254-760-3225.